Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Warren with the Active Trend Traders. Welcome to the Making Money Trading Stocks, Options, and ETFs. I am so glad you are here uh, today. I've got a lot of stuff to cover in a very short period of time. The market uh, basically showing a little bit of weakness uh, today, as to be expected. It's September. September tends to be the worst performing month of any of the other months, uh, and that goes back for, for years and years and years. Um, moving forward, I want to remind everybody that all of the truths we do present are for trading purposes only. Traders should always pay for trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance is not an indication or a promise of uh, future performance. A little bit about me. It's really funny. Um, the active trend traders now have been in business for, this is going into our 12th year. And so I'm just going, wow, um, I'm really excited. My, my son that I'm here visiting in Boise is gonna be joining the business. And so he's gonna be handling a lot more of uh, handling some of the uh, back testing, also some of the marketing. And, um, and uh, you, know, you know how these young, young folks are. And, uh, but you know, you, you, I mean, how, how young can you be when you're almost 40? So <laughs> I want to remind you the objective of our session today is to basically timely, actionable intel uh, review at the end of each week. We like to uh, provide this, gives you a setup for going into next week. For the premium members, you can follow us on into the um, final hour where we talk about some trades that we're getting set up where we actually can take some trades going into the final hour. Uh, but we look at uh, what's the market currently doing. Well, the market review basically is it's kind of mixed with waning momentum. Uh, we pressed up, made new highs. However, made new highs on some slightly uh, negative divergence indicators. And the, the uh, uh, market is coming back into uh, support as we well kind of want it to do. Um, uh, I personally think that if we could get a five to 10% retracement from the uh, early, you know, the, the uh, uh, August highs, that would be a, give us a perfect launching pad to go into the end of the year for that end of the year run in the indexes. Um, the September rate hikes uh, by the Fed is basically kind of cooked into the to the mix right now. So um, I know there was today was non payroll uh, jobs report uh, and the uh, jobs are up again. Um, you know the economy on the surface at least appears to be cooking along fairly well. However, uh, are so there's some hiccups in the economy that could be uh, could cause the market to go into more of a contraction, maybe going into next year. Um, I think, I think you know, some of the things we'll see going into the end of the year, one, what's going to happen with the, um, uh, with the midterm elections, what, uh, which will probably you know, work towards setting us up for the 2020 elections. Uh, and so all those things can be definitely market shaping. Um, so let's take a look at some stocks, ETFs, performance, bonus trades, if we have any. Uh, this week, I don't think we have any. And so remember, you have been given the keys. Now learn how to open the door. Um, really pleased. Uh, those of you who are premium members got and uh, subscribing to the option portion of the membership um, did get an alert this morning on Tesla. Tesla got ripped. Apparently, Elon Musk uh, appeared on a show last night to talk about Tesla, but apparently uh, they thought he rolled a joint and smoked it on the on the stage. I don't know if that happened or not, but Tesla's in a little bit of, of concern um, to if it's it's um, uh, primary officers for the company left this week. Their HR officer and also uh, she's not coming back from leave, and then. Uh, uh, a guy that had been hired, and I think it was a, a CEO or CFO, not CEO, but CFO 
um, decided to walk away after being on the job for a week. So something he didn't like what he saw somewhere. So we'll see what's going on with that. As we see, NASDAQ, NASDAQ composite up bigger, uh, the biggest of the, the indexes, Russell up about 12% for the year. Uh, S&P and Dow bringing up the rear. Um, active trend trading up about 23, almost 24%. Actually, it is now up 24% that we opened some of the positions we did today. So quite pleased with that. I'll run through the rest of the slides here, and then we'll get into looking at the individual stocks. Here's our breakout on uh, uh, how we're doing for the year so far. And of course, I really, uh, I, I think the members are really uh, in, uh, enjoying and appreciating this is the uh, go no go table, which basically is a, a snapshot of the entities that I'm following. And uh, two of the ones that became very interesting to me uh, as of uh, our training session that we did last night was LABD and DRIP. Uh, we have an order in for uh, a drip. Some of you may have taken the setup that we covered last night in a training. If you're a premium member, please take a look at that premium because we uh, the the uh, midweek training session because we cover some entries and and also highlight some potential uh, entries. LABU provided a great entry this morning um, as it pulled back in the middle of a candlestick, and I will take a look at that one, that chart also coming up here shortly. Here's what we're doing. Cash flow for our strategy three uh, session for the month of August, a little bit over $4,000. Very pleased with that. Uh, got, you know, not beat up severely, but uh, uh, small losses in both Tesla and uh, Baba on strategy uh, three. We had a, uh, let's see, uh, we had a, uh, uh, a trade going on in uh, Gush from uh, er early year, a couple of weeks ago. That turned out, you know, made a couple hundred dollars on that. So that was fine. That was a test trade. And you'll be seeing more of those of a premium member coming forward. So for next week, trade talks, tweets, and more of the same. Uh, again, this tends to be a week time of year. And so we'll see what transpires into this end of the year. And here's a perfect example of that weakness that I'm talking about. Typically September, this is the S&P. Notice, gets the mid part of September, sells off. What does it set us up for though? It sets us up for a nice little rally going in through the October, November, December timeframe uh, of the year. And so that's what I'm planning on and waiting for going into the end of 2018. Uh, crude oil. Uh, those of you who do follow crude, here's to be, you know, here's to what to be looking out for in crude. T crude tends to peak in the September, October timeframe, and then basically sell off because peak driving for the year is over, sell off into beginning of December. And that sometimes can get a little bit of a pop into January, but then sell off into February. And then you ratchet it up at the end of February as you approach the spring months of March, April. Then you start getting into May, June, July, August. Uh, and so just be aware of the, of the seasonality on crude. Um, speaking of that seasonality, um, some of the future presentations we're going to be giving here uh, uh, in the very near future. Okay. Next week, next week, I will be in San Jose uh, on, starting on the 13th, but I'll cover this first. We're going to be covering the uh, monthly BAM meeting on the 15th of September at the, and this is not a webinar meeting, it is a live meeting at the Masonic in San Jose. We're going to talk about the psychology of you on Thursday, which is September 30, 13th at 6 o'clock in the evening. We'll be doing a Silicon Valley options group, um, and I'll be talking about seasonality. And this is going to be an updated presentation about seasonality uh, and how to benefit utilizing options for seasonality. Again, the BAM meeting, highlight that to anybody who's in the Bay Area, 
Rather than nine o'clock in the morning, it will be at 1.30 in the afternoon and run for about two and a half hours. Um, and so the Masonic was not available in the morning. And so we had to take the, the, the uh, afternoon slot. So, okay, um, we continue on with our premium training. And there's the other thing. The other enhancement that we are working on for premium, you know, for premium members or members that have been a part of the early warning alerts service is called the, uh, I, we have modified this, changed it, enhanced it, uh, so that we'll, we will be covering both minor, major and minor um, index reversal points throughout the year. Uh, it'll provide us more trades and allow us to stay with trades longer and reduce the amount of whipsaw that we've had in the past with just a straight EWA. And this service is going to be launched uh, towards the middle of, of, um, uh, of October. Uh, first, the part to the middle of October, and it's called the Market Action Points or MAPS service. So let's take a look at a, a couple of charts. And one of the reasons why I have to go through the slides uh, right now <laughs> so directly is I'm only working on one screen. Um, so, and so because I'm only working on one screen, uh, I, I have to bounce back and forth between um, Uh, between you know and pulling up pulling up individual stocks and so let's say there we go okay there's a little bit of a so hey let's talk about the s p s p is you know it's looking uh kind of interesting it it basically it's down here a little bit and again if you do that Get those alerts out of the way. Okay, on the S and P, uh, I wanted to show the S and P rather than just the spiders today to give you a full-fledged. This is the essence of what the index is doing, which is sometimes not the same exact thing as the individual uh, um, uh, ETF. So, as we see, starting on the daily chart, uh, we reached a peak on eight twenty-nine. And then we basically started dropping to that point, and we basically have gone down every day for the one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. Now, normally, we're not going to get many more than six to seven days before we start looking for a place to bounce. So, as I wanted to get an essence of where might the S&P run into support, I threw up the FIB, and the FIB on the weekly chart was from this swing low to the swing high. And as you can see, we have a magic fib box from the 38.2 down to the 61.8 uh, um, uh, fib, um, fib levels. And look what they do. Okay, the 38.2 lines up pretty well with the 50 day moving average. That's when you get that concurrency, uh, con you know, of clues. That's telling you, okay, that is a strong level. Drop down to the 50, the 2805. Well, same thing. We get a, a numerous levels of past support. Well, first, fast resistance broke through, came back, retested, retested several times at about the 2805 level. And then if we drop down to the 618 retracement at the uh, 2779, well, it's just slightly below the 100 day moving average. And so that looks like a very strong zone of support and it would tie in very nicely to just a nice continuous gradual pullback into the middle of you know the first part to the middle of august or correction october excuse me uh, october and and that would coincide with when we would expect things to turn her back around the other thing we can do is even if and if we I like this and carry it on about the same trajectory down of the TSI. Where does it meet? Let's see, where does it meet the uh, um, uh, the line on a daily basis? What well, meets it about nine thirteen? 
And so it could drop a little further. If TSI weekly chart pointing down, negative divergence from the high, if it projected down, we do the similar type of thing, where does it potentially hit? Well, let's just draw a one. And this is just an approximation. If it maintain a, a return like that, gets down to the lower level, and or even this, the zero line, when does it happen? Happens about the first part to the, to the latter part of October. That's when we should correspond with a reversal. Let's take a real quick look at the um, NASDAQ. NASDAQ, as you can see, not quite a bearish uh, engulfing pattern, but certainly a bearish looking uh, sell off today. Where is it selling off to? Basically just close to the 50 day moving average. Uh, those of you who were in the training the other session, uh, the other, last night, uh, know that you know I've, I've locked in and continue to place this 34 day moving average in here, or 34 period moving average on the daily chart. That's a good level of support between the 34 and the 50. And as you can see, we've hit that, That's, uh, and it looks like it's providing support, but we did sell off from where? The 20 day moving average. What else do we wanna take a look at when we're, we're just estimating, well, where might this go? Well, TSI, we've had no indication on the daily chart that TSI wants to reverse and move back up. So we may bust through the zero line, which tends to be a support level, and come down here to the, possibly the negative 25 or even down to the negative 43 and below, and then get a reversal up from there. Uh, in the past, where have we bound, done our, our major bounces? Well, you know, basically at the, excuse me, at the 50-day uh, moving average, here, here, didn't quite make it to the 50 here, but those were the major bounces. If we go back and look even earlier in the year, let me get rid of that. Look earlier in the year, go back to, you know, take a look at this downtrend that we have going on right now. Now let's go back to the December time frame. As you can see, what's the not the December, the January time frame where we got this sell-off here. Well, what's the major difference? Well, one, at, at least as of right now, we've not had any huge, large sell-offs. You know, these large, wide-range days hasn't happened. And so this, that may mean that the current sell-off that we are getting may be a little bit more controlled. Uh, you know, and, and we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait and see. Because this was a pretty, you know, the market could have really turned south very easily at the beginning of the year and really had a sell-off. Didn't happen. Uh, the economy came through and, and, and some of the other things that happened through the government to work it back up. So that's NASDAQ. Lastly, uh, take a look at the Russell. And if I, yeah, the Russell. Yeah, I really like what I'm seeing here. Weekly chart, Russell. This, this is flashing a sale, sale sign. Bullish engulfing of, of last week's candlestick. Nice sell-off, but it's still very controlled, right back into a level of support, as, you know, just like we'd like to see, you know, see it happen. And so we'll just continue to follow that. Uh, TSI has not rolled up or turned back around yet. Market forecast still look like, looks like it wants to continue to fall a little bit. So that's what's going on with those. Okay, uh, this is the, the um, uh, drip trade we were looking to try to get in today. Didn't get back into the moving averages for a buy, actually gapped up a little bit, so no fill. Uh, I'll be reassessing that over the weekend uh, to see if that's something we want to be looking to get into. LABD, though, LABD did really great. And, and this is something, and I'll share this with everybody, not just premium members. When you get a large candlestick like this here that moves up, oftentimes a very conservative place to try to enter a trade is in the middle third 
of this candlestick. So what is that middle third? Well, it's anywhere from here to here. And if you have a moving average that's also cutting through the middle of the, the large uh, candle, that's great because, you know, you can utilize that. And as you can see, the in this case, the eight-day moving average worked out of support today. But price fell into the 23.17 area today and then has rebounded very nicely. Um, on an intraday chart, what happened was you got, you basically opened up up here, ran up to 25, then dropped. And so uh, if, if somebody didn't have a conditional order in and would have been watching the stock, it would have, been, it would have scared, the, scared the heck out of you, going, uh, it was going to die. On a uh, um, weekly chart, we get a nice bullish engulfing. Again, midsection of bullish engulfing <clears throat> would be a, a great place to potentially enter a trade here. Um, and that would be, where would we trade to? we trade probably back up to the 2761 level. Okay. Um, last but not least, I'll hit two other uh, entities, V-O-N-N. -N. Venom. Looks kind of interesting. Find a support at the 34, as you can see on a daily chart. Put in a, in a nice little dragonfly doji. However, what... And, and I'm showing this as, as an example. What's, while yes, this is a reversal signal, what is it coming through? TSI has not broken back to the upside. Therefore, it's, while you can take a candlestick reversal pattern, uh, like a, um, a Dragonfly Doge, Joji, or a hammer, if you will, because this is what this basically is, that does not require confirmation. However, if the TSI is still running down, be careful with that trade because it can it could break to the downside very easily. Uh, as we see over here, what is the what does the weekly chart show us? Well, the weekly chart shows us a uh, bearish divergence on the TSI as we're pushing up to make new high highs, excuse me, and therefore the momentum is waning as it's moving up. That's happening with a lot of different entities. So let me, okay. That basically covers what I wanted to cover with everybody today. Um, any, any stocks or, or anything you would like us to take a real quick look at? I've got about two minutes to take some look, uh, look at some other entities. So Eric, did you get into uh, LABD today? Okay. Well, if nobody has any stocks to take a look at, we'll then we'll we'll basically conclude our session for today. I'll go back over to this part and just basically say uh, the final hour will come up in approximately uh, at the top of the hour at um, the twelve o'clock hour in California, one o'clock here in Boise, Idaho. So. Remember, this 2018 is a year of breakthrough and restoration. Have a great weekend. I hope your Labor Day weekend was good. Um, this, you know, remember, this was a short week. And so uh, I'm very pleased to see what's going on. And David says, CNSL. I will take a look, real quick look at that, David. And so Aloha. Let me take a look at that. CNSL. And what is CNSL? Consolidated Communications Holding? Okay. Is this a, a place of, is this a, is this a REIT kind of, kind of a deal? Big dividends, okay. 
Holy smoke. Holy smokes. Yeah. It's paying 30, 38 cents per quarter, almost 39 cents per quarter on a $12 stock. That's pretty significant. It has, what is it done here on a weekly chart? Let's get this out. We're taking a look. At, so it has dropped from 28 to 11. However, it looks like it's trying to hammer out a bottom over here. Um, get a nice little flag going here. If it breaks to the upside, we're probably looking at a run up to 14. But with something like this, if um, I would want David to just kind of take a look at this over a long period of time, and it's over a long period of time, yeah, I mean, you know, back in 2008, you would drop down to about 760 to ten dollars. It's doing that again right here. Um, you know, it may have some more downside because it is definitely in a downtrend. Um, but this may be a higher low if we can take out that high right there. Take out the high at 1245, then we're probably targeting, you know, back up to 1345. And that also may be what will trigger it and get it back on a, uh, uh, an upside trajectory. Because if we can take out that level at, like I said, and here's another one, a weekly chart, similar type thing. You take out that high at 1370, then it's basically got a fairly clear track from there all the way up to uh, 17, about 17 bucks. So uh, that plus the dividend, uh, this might be something you could uh, uh, do well with. So with that, hey, I'm going to close up shop. We'll talk to you guys, talk to some of your premium members in about uh, 30 minutes. I hope that uh, gives you some idea of what to do on that. And so, and David, I hope you got that earlier email I sent you also with that receipt. Okay. God bless everybody. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend. And if you're a college football fanatic like I am, I hope your team does well this weekend. Aloha.